Hey, did you know Einstein failed at maths and the Great Wall of China can be seen from space? Ugh, no, Todd. Not any of that is true. In fact, there are a lot of popularly held historical beliefs that are simply untrue. This is average history, and here are 10 of the most famous historical misconceptions debunked. Historical misconception number one. Pyramids were built by slaves. Tell people to picture the building of the pyramids, and most would imagine overworked slaves hauling large blocks of limestone as they get whipped by their overseers. The reality, however, was the complete opposite. Not only were the people working on the pyramids free men, but archaeological evidence suggests that the pharaohs went the extra mile to ensure their welfare. This meant entire villages were built near the worksite, ensuring comfort for the workers. They were also well fed. Animal bones dug up show the workers building the pyramids were entitled to the best cuts of meat. It would be like construction workers today getting gourmet steaks, all provided free by their company. Further evidence in support of a free workforce is the graffiti left by them near the building sites. Such acts wouldn't have been tolerated if the workers themselves weren't held in high regard. For instance, at the Pyramids of Giza, one graffiti reads, The Friends of Khufu Gang. FYI, Khufu was the pharaoh who ordered the construction of the largest Egyptian pyramid. And now, onwards to historical misconception number two. Picasso was an artist ages ago. Type was Picasso on Google, and the first auto-suggestion you typically see is, was Picasso a Renaissance artist? Now, personally, I find it a bit absurd that people would search for this, considering quite a lot of people today were also around when Picasso was alive. Picasso, the famous surrealist artist and sculptor, was born on October 25th, 1881, and died on April the 8th, 1973. Considering that the Renaissance was nearly five centuries ago, he definitely wasn't a Renaissance artist. And no, he wasn't Italian either. He was Spanish and lived most of his life in France. Historical misconception number three, Einstein failed at maths. The only one who failed was Todd in his history class. Everyone, let's boo Todd here. Todd, boo. Boo to you, mate. Curiously, this misconception was already widespread while Einstein was still alive. When he was shown a news clipping of this statement, he laughed and replied, quote, Before I was 15, I had mastered differential and integral calculus. In fact, there is no record of Einstein ever being bad academically. He was always a gifted student with exceptional grades, especially in maths and science. Even in elementary school, he was routinely getting perfect grades. If there was any quip teachers had with the young prodigy, it was that he was simply bored with studies. This was not because he hated studying, but because the subjects were too easy for him, apparently. The myth, perhaps, may have emerged because Einstein often did complain he wasn't as good in maths as some other world-class physicists of the time. It would be similar to Messi or Ronaldo complaining they aren't as far as Mbappe or Mohamed Salah. People overlooking context must have just picked that he was bad at maths. And I guess the reason the myth has persisted for so long is because people will always prefer a convenient lie to an uncomfortable truth. Such as Todd here. Boo! By claiming Einstein too struggled with his subjects, people with bad grades don't have to feel bad about themselves. But debunking this myth doesn't have to make anyone feel bad either. Here are other highly successful people who did struggle with grades. Anyhow, historical misconception number four, witches were burned at the Salem Witch Trials. In America, almost everyone is familiar with the Salem Witch Trials. We even made a movie about it. It is the most notorious case of mass hysteria in the nation's colonial history, in which some 200 people were accused of witchcraft and out of them, some 24 were murdered. Now, sure, people got killed, but there isn't any record of them being burned at stakes. Historical evidence suggests that 19 were murdered by hanging and five died under torture. Debunking another popular myth, not all of those killed for witchcraft were women. At least a quarter were men. To put it basically, the trials were about finding scapegoats for problems facing the colonists at Salem and the surrounding areas. 
As such, it was the usual outcasts, perceived outsiders, and those who spoke a little funny, that others thought they could accuse and get away with. Now, onwards to historical misconception number five, the Great Wall of China can be seen from space. I remember being in junior high and none other than my history teacher stating this as a fact. Did I believe her? Of course not, because you have to be really stupid, like Todd here, to believe this. The Great Wall of China is 16 feet wide on average. That's 1 330th of a mile. Now, space is said to begin at the Kármán line, which is about 62 miles above the surface. Now, here is what satellite imagery shows what the Great Wall looks like from 62 miles away. Can you spot it? Of course you can't. Even when zooming in to just one mile, the wall is barely visible. So even by plane, you would find it difficult to spot, unless said plane is flying at very low altitudes and crashing into a hill, because why were you flying at such low altitudes near the wall? Anyway, speaking so much on the Great Wall, it reminds me... Historical misconception number six. The Great Wall is the only man-made monument visible from space. People who make this claim are not only wrong, but they are doubly wrong. As we've established, the Great Wall of China isn't visible from space, but there are plenty of other man-made monuments that are visible. Most of these are modern, such as the Palm and the World Islands in Dubai. Surprisingly, even the Golden Gate Bridge can also be seen from space, its bright orange color offering contrast to the blue waters below. Other important monuments visible from space include the Great Pyramids, the Hoover Dam, and the Chinese Three Gorges Dam. Now, let's move on to historical misconception number seven. Jesus was born on the 25th of December. In most of the Christian world, on the 25th of December, Christmas, Christ sent, is celebrated. Supposedly on the day on which Mary gave birth to Jesus. Except this date could be entirely wrong. The Bible, for one, does not provide a definitive date. However, it does provide some clues. All of these points to a date other than December. For instance, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 14 mentions country shepherds abiding in the field. This would be rather unusual during a cold winter month. Rather, it would make more sense if it was spring or autumn. In addition, winter would be a particularly difficult time for pregnant Mary to travel 70 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Yes, Jesus was born in the Middle East, but that doesn't mean the region remains warm for the whole year. In Bethlehem, for instance, at times, the temperature can indeed drop below zero. Historical misconception number eight. The Declaration of Independence was signed on July the 4th, 1776. It was actually signed on August the 2nd, 1776. So why do we celebrate July 4th as Independence Day? The reason is that the declaration got ratified by the Congress on July 4th. Basically, this was the date on which everyone formally agreed that, yeah, the British suck, and we should totally declare our independence. Also, here's a fun fact. There exists many different versions of the Declaration of Independence. In fact, the one we normally see on display at the National Archive isn't even the original. Rather, it is a much later copy commissioned in 1823 by the then Secretary of State, John Adams, and designed by printer William J. Stone. Historical misconception number nine, Iron Maidens were used as medieval torture devices. Now, there is no denying that the medieval ages were brutal. Very. However, there isn't actually any record of an Iron Maiden being used during this period for torture or execution. In fact, all evidence points to the fact that this torture device may have never actually existed. So, how did we arrive at this myth? Enter 19th century archaeology, where the truth didn't matter as much as a good old lie. Historians agree that the Iron Maiden was actually an exhibition piece made from various artifacts found in museums at the time. The intention was to create shock in the audience. The closest thing to the Iron Maiden that did exist during the medieval times was the Scand Mantle, aka the Barrel of Shame. As the name implies, victims would be made to wear a barrel-like coat and forced to walk about in public as people around them threw insults and rotten vegetables at them. And now, onto our last historical misconception for this video. Egypt has the most pyramids in the world. 
Egypt is indeed famous for its many pyramids. However, the country doesn't actually have the most pyramids in the world. That title belongs to its southern neighbor, Sudan. In ancient times, Sudan was home to the Kushite and Nubian civilizations, which were also well known for their pyramid building. There are around 255 pyramids in Sudan, compared to some 118 in Egypt. Now, the unfortunate thing is that Sudan actually could have far more preserved pyramids, until this Italian gentleman showed up and started blowing them up with dynamite to loot their hidden treasures. Now, this unfortunate fact aside, guess which country ranks third with the most pyramids? It's the US, which actually has more pyramids than Mexico or Peru. And that about wraps it up for today's video. Thanks for watching and comment which topic surprised you the most.